All right, welcome back to some more Offensive Python here. Uh, the new Black Hat Python book did launch, so I'd highly recommend to check that one out if you haven't uh, already. And a lot of good information there. The code base has been updated in the examples to use Python 3. As you know, Python 2 has been on the way out for a while now, pretty much almost fully deprecated at this point. So really nice that uh, they have went ahead and updated this valuable resource here. Now, last time on the videos, we covered TCP clients, UDP clients. Well, in this one, we're going to be covering a TCP server. And uh, the cool thing is, since we built a client last time, and here's kind of what the code looked like. Of course, I did change this port a little bit and uh, the target host as well and you know what data we're actually sending it. But this is the outline. It remains the same here. So we have this client. We can actually create a TCP server that we can then use this script to connect to it. So let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to create that file. We'll create a file called server.py. And really, uh, the first thing we're going to start off with, as always, with our uh, Python code is our imports. So in particular, there's two that we need. Of course, we need socket so we can interact with you know, IPs and ports. And we're going to actually import threading as well. That way, we can have a multi-threaded server, meaning it can accept multiple connections uh, at one time. Right. That way it's not like, oh, OK, this client connected and now no one else can use the server. Right. Because that's the whole point of a server. Right. You need to be able to support multiple connections simultaneously. So this module will allow us to do exactly that. And then for our IP address, we'll tell it to listen on all interfaces and we'll do that with uh, these zeros here. Right. And then for the port. Well, if we go back here, we see that we had the TCP client listening on port, or our TCP client connecting on port 9998. So we'll have our server be listening on that port as well. And so now we define our function that we're going to call main. And uh, in that function, we're going to set a server variable equal to our TCP connection. So if you go back and watch some of the previous videos, you'll see that uh, this is how you define your TCP connection, basically. And this is just one of those things where you can just go ahead and memorize it. Or uh, if not memorize it, probably just write it down, really. Because you probably won't be creating these things all the time, right? And so if you have it written down somewhere, we can reference it. I would say that's the ideal way to do it. Now, when we bind, we do the server.bind, uh, we have to do it as a tuple because that's just how Python works. Basically, when you create an IP and port, you need to have that as a tuple, uh, first of all. And then upon doing that, what you can do is have it listen for up to five connections, we'll, we'll do simultaneously, right? Whatever number we put inside these parentheses here is how many connections it can support. Remember, this is a multi-threaded server here. So uh, with this code block here, it will be able to listen for five uh, connections or be able to support up to five connections, I guess I should say. Now we want to actually have like what it prints to the console so that we can see that it's doing stuff basically, right? And uh, this is the uh, example that they had. And honestly, I think it looks uh, pretty appealing. So just having this uh, little, I don't know, asterisk in uh, square brackets, however you want it to look, you can create it that way, right? And then these... Uh, basically, it's kind of like a format string, what they're doing here. So anything that you put inside the uh, squiggly braces, um, you can insert your variables, right? So we will say that it's listening on all interfaces, port 9998. And that's basically all this line does. So as soon as we start the server, it'll just say, hey, we're, it's listening, right? And now here's where the actual magic happens in the program is inside this while loop. This is a while true because we want to pretty much endlessly listen for uh, 
a connection, right? And so we're going to define a couple variables here, client and address, and uh, we'll have it to accept the connections, right, that it gets. And, you know, here, here yet again, we're going to another print statement to the console so that we can see that uh, something has happened when it does accept a uh, connection. So upon doing that, it's actually going to say that it accepted a connection from, and here's where we can use the templating here, address. Now, a couple things, right? We want to use, and this just has to do with how the address variable is outputted, right? If we look at the zero index, we can see the IP. And if we look at index one of the address variable, that will be the port. So we want to see both of those things. So we will have it output both. And once I run this, if you're a little confused now, you'll see uh, what it what it's actually doing here, if, uh, if that example wasn't clear. And so now we're going to actually define a client handler. And this is what happens once you actually do get that connection, right? This is where you want to utilize the, the multi-threading. Threading.thread. And we can define a variable target. Set that equal to handle client. And then tell it, you know, any args set equal to client. Like so. And now what, what you want to do, right? Because after it... After it actually creates the thread for that connection, you want to make sure that it's, you know, it goes back to, you know, we want to actually do something with that, right? So we want to actually start that handler each time. So that's why uh, we have client underscore handler dot start. And so then we can have a, a separate function below that for actually handling the client. So this is what's going to happen. So handle underscore clients. And we want it to accept one variable uh, client socket is what we'll call it in this case. And uh, basically what we're going to do with this is with this variable, and this just makes it so that there's less typing we have to do, right? We'll call client underscore socket sock, right? We will define a variable request and have that receive the data, right? The standard 1024 that you might be used to seeing. And when it does receive the data, we want it to print out to the console once again. This time saying received. And then you can use the templating to say the decoded request because you got to keep in mind that uh, this is going to be encoded. That's just the way Python does it so that, you know, it doesn't get, uh, the data doesn't get tampered with while it's uh, in transit, shall we say. Oops, I have this a little bit out of order here. But, um... This is what this is going to look like. And then after we print that off, we're actually going to send back to our client some data, right? Just so it knows that, hey, we received the data. So in the example, they just send back an act. You can send back whatever you like. And now this final line here, basically what it, uh, what it does, you might have seen this before if you've been messing around with Python for any amount of time. That's this statement here. If name, if, if dunder name dunder equals dunder main dunder, then do something, right? So what that means is if this Python script here is run, then execute the main function, right? Uh, why is this important? Well, if it's used as a module, right, if someone else imports this code, then the main function will not be run. It will only be run 
if you explicitly run the server.py file, right? So an example, right? This socket that we imported and threading, these are other Python files, okay? And when they're run, they're not run as name equals main. They're run as name equals socket or name equals threading, right? And so they can even put some functionality in there that we say they only want it to be run if someone runs that file specifically, right? And that's how you can do that. This is just kind of one of those good practices type of thing, and it can help you avoid any weird behavior in the code. So with this here, all you need to know is that this main function will only run if server.py is run, not if someone imports server.py, right, into their own code base. So with that being said, uh, let's save this. And if I didn't make any typos, then this should work as expected. So if we do Python 3, because we're using Python 3 here, server.py, it should, yep, there we go. See, it says it's listening, right? because we just step through the code here. That is the first thing it does, right? This is kind of where it starts, really. It says, okay, the name is equal to main because we ran server.py. So let's run the main function. And it goes here, establishes a, you know, the, starts listening on the IP import you know, with TCP and uh, accepting up to five connections. And then it prints this off to the screen. Now, at this point, it's just sitting here in this while loop, on the while true loop. It's just waiting on a request, right? A connection. And I just noticed here, we might have, uh, we might have had a, a type error, potentially, though nothing's jumping out of the top of my head here. This looks like it should be okay. Let's just go ahead and, uh, and run it and see, right? Oh, right here, right? This is definitely a typo. So it didn't error out yet. This is pretty interesting to note, right? It's just sitting here. It didn't get to this part in the code. As soon as I try to connect back, this thing's gonna crash with an error, right? Because I named this with an R at the end on accident, uh, but here I just said the target is equal to this, and it's like, hey, this doesn't exist, right? Undefined variable, right? So I can show you how this is gonna not work. We should do it just for uh, <laughs> experiment's sake, right? So you guys can see what I'm talking about. As soon as I connect to this, it's gonna break everything, right? Connection reset by peer and see it just crashed. So we'll fix that really quickly here, like so. And that gets rid of the error. So now run this, it's listening. We connect back by running our TCP client once again. This time we see ACK, right? Because what it did is it sent some data. Okay, let's see what we had here. We had it send this data right here. So we should see that if we look down here and we do, perfect. And as soon as it received that data, right? Here's where it receives it. It's actually going to send back some data of its own. This ACK here could be anything, right? Anything I program in as the developer. And I guess another thing to close, uh, to kind of close out with here is that you can also use netcat as well to connect to this. So, oh, I didn't have to close it. This The server's still uh, still running here. And uh, looks like I actually messed with it because it's already in use. So we're gonna have to free up that port or change the port. We'll just change the port really quick here. Just makes it easier. We didn't properly close the, uh, the thing, that's why. So what we can do is we can actually just, instead of using a script to connect to this, we can just use netcat, right? And say, hey, our IP address, you can use like localhost on this port. And now some data here, send some data, and then it gets the ACK response and then closes the connection. But it's still listening for connections here. And you see what I typed was received. So yeah, hopefully this was of help to you guys how to create a quick server. Uh, not too much functionality here per se, but this is kind of the outline, the basic fundamentals of how to do it. And in future videos, we're going to be diving into some more useful scenarios of kind of using this and giving it some actually you know, useful functionality. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stay tuned to this series. Thanks for watching and hit subscribe if you haven't already and the like button to help get this information out there. And I will see you guys 
over in the videos on screen now if you want to just keep going, keep learning. And yeah, thanks for watching.